All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today, but I wanted to start out with this Rich Piana story. Now, I know um, it's been a long time since we've talked about Rich Piana on this channel, um, since he did, in fact, pass away a few years back. But I thought this was kind of a weird development in the Rich Piana saga. Um, so if you guys are still subscribed to the Rich Piana YouTube channel, you guys might have noticed that a premiere has been set up on that channel for an upcoming video. And that video is titled, Unseen Resurfaced Footage Shots Fired, My Response, Rich Gaspari Destroyed. So a lot of people were asking me what this is about, if Rich Piana and Rich Gaspari had some kind of beef or drama. Um, and my response is I don't think it really matters. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Um, whoever's running that YouTube channel, Rich Piana's been gone for three years now almost. And for them to like restart some drama, which they're clearly doing for views. I mean, this clearly whoever's running this channel is trying to make some like last minute clickbait videos and get some money from that channel before, you know, they really can't use it anymore. So I actually think it's pretty disrespectful to Rich's legacy um, to use his channel and to use his old platforms to post up some old drama clickbait stuff um, that he can't control. Like he might not have wanted to, that to come out. You know, what if there's a reason why he never posted that? Because he decided not to or didn't want to or didn't want to put that out there. I just think it's kind of disrespectful if this video is going to be some kind of a beef video between Rich Gaspari and Rich Piana. Um, I just think it's it, it's disrespectful at a bare minimum. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys think they should be posting videos on Rich's old channel um, that are going to bring up some new drama that doesn't really need to be brought up? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, the next story, this is kind of big Olympia news here. So the Mr. Olympia announced this past week um, that Iris Kyle is going to be making her return to the Miss Olympia stage in female bodybuilding. Iris Kyle is the winningest bodybuilder of all time at the Olympia, male or female. The male record is eight Olympia titles, and Iris Kyle holds 10 Olympia titles. In addition to those 10 Olympia titles, she also holds seven Miss International titles, which is the female bodybuilding title you win at the Arnold Classic. She won that seven times in a row and won the Olympia seven times. Insane. Um, so she is the best athlete in bodybuilding by wins of the Olympia for sure. Um, and she took a lot of time off. It's been in several years now. I want to say since 2014 was the last time she competed. She is certainly one of the best to ever do it, and she's a phenomenal bodybuilder. But the thing that worries me here, and this is the next thing I want to talk about with the Olympia, is the fact that she's 45 years old. She's older. She's not going to be the champion that she once was. She might be. She's still going to be very good, but she's not going to be the Iris Kyle we saw six years ago that was already on the tail end of her career. So this is kind of what's worrying me with the Olympia this year. I think a lot of things are pointing in the direction of the Olympia might not go that smoothly and might not be that exciting. So bringing back an old legend like Iris Kyle is great, but is that a telltale sign that they're worried that there isn't going to be enough competitors or enough draw at the Olympia in 2020? And that's what I wanted to get to in the next story here. So I'll tie this story in with this. Rolly Winkler posted a video training with William Bonac, two of the best Olympia competitors right now, two of the top bodybuilders in the world right now. One thing they have in common, neither of them lives in the United States. Now, as you guys know, with this lockdown and all this stuff happening around the world right now with the uh, situation that we can't mention, a lot of large-scale events have been adversely impacted, the Olympia being one of them. The Olympia, for the first time ever in its history, postponed till December, regularly held in September. And one of the big questions that I've been thinking about is what if international travel is still suspended in December? Most of the athletes, a, a large majority of the top athletes at the Olympia do not live in the United States. And right now, you really can't come to the United States because of everything that's going on, the travel restrictions. Now, I know a lot can happen. We're about five months away. A lot can happen in five months' time. This situation could get a lot better, or it could get a lot worse, or it could stay the same, in which case we would still not be able to have international competitors. So just think about that for a second. If you think about the top guys at the Olympia, you got Big Rami, Hadi Chupin, William Bonak, Rolly Winkler, 
even throwing a guy like uh, Nathan Deasha, Lucas Osladil, these guys won't be able to come if this situation is the same. So think about what that Olympia lineup would be, especially when you're talking about no Phil Heath, no Kai Green, probably no Sean Roden. You're going to have Brandon Curry, and who else? If you don't have international competitors, you're going to have like Brandon, Dexter, and Cedric. And I'm not saying that those guys are not fantastic bodybuilders, but that level of competition is not going to be very high. So while I think it's fantastic to say, okay, we're bringing back Iris Kyle, we're bringing back female bodybuilding, we're going to have Flex Lewis making his debut in men's open. Those things are great, and those things are exciting, um, but I'm getting worried that they might be looking for things like that to advertise or to help advertise or promote the show, these like exciting little things, because maybe they're worried about the potential of these bodybuilders not being able to make it from other countries or whatever the case may be. Um, and it's kind of scary. But I do have to say, I mean, props to Dan Solomon and the new owner, Jake Wood, for keeping the Olympia going. I mean, I think it's a really good thing um, that they're not canceling the Olympia yet. Um, I think initially, the previous owners, AMI, I think they would have canceled it. I think if they still own the Olympia and all this stuff started happening and the lockdown and all that stuff, they would have just canceled it and not even rescheduled it for later in the year. So I think props to Jake Wood and props to Dan Solomon uh, for making sure that it still happens. But I'm afraid at this point that if it does happen, the lineup is going to be extremely lackluster if we can't get these international guys into the competition. And that's not even taking into consideration what if the expo gets canceled? Um, you know, what if uh, there's social distancing rules, you know, re-implemented um, by the time December comes around? What if they're not allowed to have a large gathering to watch the show? I mean, just look what happened with the Arnold Classic. I mean, five months ago today, we barely knew anything about this situation. And now five months from now, it could be a lot worse. So who knows? Um, and that's really the reason why I'm not going to the Olympia this year. I'm just going to watch it on the live stream. Usually by now. I would have booked my tickets to Vegas and my hotel in Vegas. I would have had all that stuff set up um, by this point in the year. But I did the same thing for the Arnold Classic, and I lost money on some of the hotels that I booked because they wouldn't let me cancel them because it was so last minute. But we only learned at the last minute um, that we that the, everything was canceled. So God forbid something happens like that in Vegas, and you know we turn up, and at the last minute they're like, yeah, you can't come to the show, there's no expo, whatever. Who knows? I'm not saying that's going to be the case, but luckily when that happened in Ohio, I live in Ohio. If I had gone to Vegas and that happened, I'd be pissed. So I know that was kind of an extensive discussion on the Olympia, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think it's going to go on as scheduled in December? Do you think we're going to have a full lineup or... Do you think it's more likely that a lot of these guys won't be able to come? Or you got to consider some of these bodybuilders might not want to come and risk it. They might not want to risk, even if they can, getting on a plane, traveling to Vegas, being exposed to all these people, um, put it, putting their bodies in a vulnerable position, putting their immune systems in a vulnerable uh, position um, by being in contest prep mode. May, may, they might not even want to do it. And look, there's another big thing I forgot about to consider here. All the all, most of these bodybuilders have not qualified for the Olympia yet. Typically, all summer and most of the spring would have been Olympia qualifiers, where you win a show, get points, you get your chance to go to the Olympia. That's how it works. So a lot of these guys, even if the travel restrictions are lifted by December, a lot of the international guys still haven't even qualified yet. So they would have to come over here and win a show and qualify, go back home, and then be able to come back over again in December. So that's one thing to think about. And the other thing to think about is that states are already, some states are shutting down again already. So the real question is, are these Olympia qualifiers, are all of them even still going to happen? And if they don't, then who's going to even be qualified for the Mr. Olympia in December? Are they going to have to issue special invitations? I mean, what's the deal? And I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I just think we need to prepare ourselves for the reality of the possibility that this year's Olympia could be the least competitive of all time if they still go ahead with it. Now, the final story that I wanted to cap this video off with was a Larry Wheel story. He put up a post on Instagram hitting a new deadlift PR of 926 pounds, 420 kilograms, 26 pound deadlift PR at 285 pounds body weight. Um, so I'll show you guys that attempt here, but I liked that he included 
um, the other attempts of over 900 pound deadlifts where he failed the lift. So I wanted to show you guys those failed attempts and the successful attempt. Now, one interesting thing that I thought about here is that he tagged Mark Boyd, WS, in the post. Mark Boyd is the guy that runs World's Ultimate Strongman, which is the federation that puts on all these live-streamed world record attempts. Could we see Larry Wheels um, transitioning to Strongman? Could we see Larry Wheels on an upcoming live stream for World's Ultimate Strongman, uh, some kind of record? even if it's a personal record. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. And please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.